Good morning. It's Friday, November 8th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Cost of a Prayer, and a scripture, Psalm 17. O Lord, hear my plea for justice. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayer, for it comes from honest lips. Declare me innocent, for you see those who do right. You've tested my thoughts and examined my heart in the night. You've scrutinized me and found nothing wrong. I'm determined not to sin in what I say. I followed your commands, which keep me from following cruel and evil people. My steps have stayed on your path. I've not wavered from following you. I'm praying to you because I know you will answer, O God. Bend down and listen as I pray. Show me your unfailing love in wonderful ways. By your mighty power, you rescue those who seek refuge from their enemies. Guard me as you would guard your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Protect me from wicked people who attack me, from murderous enemies who surround me. I'm asked virtually every day to pray for people. Sometimes it comes via email or text. Often it's in church or an urgent phone call. It's said in a lot of different ways. Pastor, please pray for my fill-in-the-blank. Or say a little prayer for fill-in-the-blank. What shall we say this morning about the cost of those prayers? And right away our thought goes to currency or payback, but that's never the cost of our prayer. However, the condition of answers to prayer does come into play here. David offers his heart to God for scrutiny as a condition of why his prayers ought to be answered. When you consider that David spent many months hiding from King Saul's murderous rage after David had faithfully served the king and become a target for his faithfulness, It's no wonder this future king is hiding in a cave, looking up to God, crying out for a miracle. God, I served Saul because you sent me there. I served and I even loved him. I didn't do anything to harm him. And now he wants me dead. God, please. I don't believe David was pointing to his own righteousness or goodness and demanding God's favor. David is pouring out his heart's allegiance to God, recounting how his life belongs to God, not just by virtue of God being the creator, although that's sufficient in itself. Rather, David's connection with God is also by choice. In the long nights as a shepherd defending his father's sheep, David trusted God. Standing before Goliath, David honored God. In battle on King Saul's behalf, David fiercely defended Saul's kingdom. In Saul's court, David sang healing songs of comfort to his king on the verge of madness. And even when presented with an opportunity in a dark cave to put an end to Saul's threatening, David served God's way, never the easy way. And now David lifts his voice and asks God to hide him under God's wings. The cost of a prayer is fidelity to God, a heart turned heavenward in commitment to God's loving kindness. In seminary, one of the classes had a week or so of concentration on how preachers ought to pray. There's a flow that's taught of adoration and confession and thanksgiving and supplication. Now, that's a matter of mechanics construction of words and phrases that make our words fit together so those in worship can understand and join in. But mechanics can never replace the cost of a prayer, which is a life surrendered to holy God. For you today, what you pray for, the words you use, and the purpose for which you're praying are all part of how the answer will be constructed in heaven. Every prayer Even the little thank you before you eat that burger carries with it a cost. And Christ placed everything you need to pay that bill on a cross outside of Jerusalem. So, if you want to live a life that has answered prayers manifested every day, let your life soak in the blood at the foot of that cross before you even think about praying. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.